right, we have a question coming uh, to us from Bobby in Ontario. Thank you for doing this webcast. CCSVI appears to provide a novel explanation for MS. My question is about timing. How long before CCSVI is assessed? And assuming approval, how long before treatment is available to MS patients? Now, Dr. Murray, I know you've touched on this a little bit before. Yes, asking about how long, the initial report from Dr. Zamboni was in 2007, uh, reporting on the observation about the neck problem. As I mentioned, there is, there's a long history of talking about the vascular system and examination of the vascular system of MS. But this venous issue from Dr. Zamboni was 2007, and 2009 reported on the assessment in 65 patients and the therapy, uh, which showed benefit in the, in the relapsing and remitting uh, patients. So that's, that's about the, the, the timing of that. In terms of um, the uh, assessment further, there are centers now that are um, evaluating, again, this venous problem, including in Vancouver. Uh, but Buffalo is doing that. They're going to be doing 1,600 patients. They've already announced the results in their first 500. And there are a number of centers now are looking at what can only be the short-term assessments, things like how many patients have the obstruction, what kind of obstruction, what, what will they then use as an indication of what's an important obstruction as opposed to one that probably is not. Uh, so those short-term things are already being studied in a number of, of centers. So we'll know a lot about that aspect of it in the short term. Question. Kathy's question from the floor is about clinical trials. Who gets chosen? Who doesn't get chosen? Karen, you had been talking before about should there be a clinical trial come available. I don't know if you've had any experience at all. You said you have been part of other mm -hmm. clinical trials. How did you get chosen? Um, I was simply asked at my annual um, uh, appointment from, from my neurologist um, if I was interested in taking part in, and he gave me sort of a list of clinical trials that I was interested, if I was interested in any, and I did, I chose two or three at the time. I was chosen for one and then the next, over about five or six years, they, another neurologist that I had at the time um, did the same thing and so that's how, I mean, they just ask if you're interested and then it's sort of a... I think it's a hit and miss. I so really do. It's communication with your own physician, mm -hmm. and the physician has the clinical trials that he or she is accessing, and, and, they, and then exactly. they know whether or not you fit. They say, and they, that's right. And they say, it's not the are you interested? Around. And I may not be chosen, though, but they ask if I'm interested, yes or no. Um, and um, that's how I've been chosen in the past. All right. All right. Dr. Murray, going back to the, the maybe you could explain to a little bit about clinical trials. Yeah. And, and that is uh, Kathy's well, question. It's, it's, a, it's an important question. Um, each trial will, in fact, one of the things that's required when you go to an ethics committee is you indicate who, who are the candidates for this particular trial. Now, they can vary. Um, one assessment may be purely by a questionnaire. And so almost anybody is available to, to fill out a questionnaire. Other, others, though, if, if there's a study, it may indicate uh, repeated visits. It then indicates that only people who can continue to re report to the clinic for assessments or regular MRIs or whatever can be in the trial. And it also says what, what kind of MS and also the d extent of the MS. That's always defined. And it indicates whether or not um, they usually have to have a balance of, of uh, patients of various types, and they also indicate things like you can't be pregnant, and there's a whole list of things that are exclusions. And, but every trial has a, a printed list of these. And that's why when you go to a clinic, they will often indicate what is available, and people can indicate whether they're interested in, in um, taking part in any of these trials. Eve, can I ask you, is, are clinical trials a matter of geography? In other words, it depends where you live and who your physician is. Is that, is that a factor? I, Could it I, be uh, a factor? It, it is in one important way. People who are treated by neurologists who are in teaching hospitals, where a larger number of trials are based, um, will be more likely to be asked this kind of question than if you're treated by a neurologist um, who works in a community um, a setting and may not be taking part uh, in clinical trials. Uh, that's a generalization, but I think it, it, it's a fair one. I think it's important to acknowledge we know at the Society that in the context of the CCSVI 
trials that are taking place, like Buffalo, or in the process of being launched, i.e. seeking ethical approval, the lists of applicants, people who are interested in those trials, are very, very, very large. And that is a result of the excitement that, that we have seen. In some trials, geography will really play a role because you'll want a large trial to not have all of the participants in one geography. Because if their MS is related, say, to environmental factors, you want to make sure that you're not looking at this only with people who live in very northern climates. The other thing that's true is that if you want a trial for um, a, a, a dr an MS treatment, a drug, like the family of drugs that are currently approved, and you need to have a group of people who are going to be on a placebo, those trials are hard to implement today in places like Canada where those treatments are funded by our governments because it is not ethical to exclude a group of patients who should be on a proven therapy just for the purpose of advancing science. So those kinds of trials are moving to parts of the world where those therapies are not refunded by governments, like the Ukraine or the Czech Republic or Russia. So geography does play a factor, but I think the significant factor to the question that's been asked in the context of CCSVI is one of the unprecedented level of interest. More, more than anything, I would say, um, and it's really unprecedented. Like many thousands of requests um, when people are looking to involve in that trial hundreds or maybe uh, just a thousand or so participants in a trial. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question.